The Consecration The hour of sacrifice has come. The celebrant now moves more solemnly than hitherto. All of his motions are charged with a consciousness of their mystic meaning as he progresses from action to action, now joining his hands, now raising his eyes to heaven, again kissing the altar once more, and then, having made these three, the threefold sign of the cross over the oblation, he finally extends his hands, palms downward over the chalice and the host, in the manner of one who gives testimony under an oath. There are five prayers said in a low voice before the consecration. This sequence is not wholly smooth, nor is it devoid of awkwardness and interruption, for they are the result of a series of developments covering several centuries. For example, the first of them, the Te Igitur, and the last, Quam Obligationem, belong most certainly to the canon in its very oldest form. The list of saints who are called to memory dates from the 3rd century, while other parts and phrases can be fixed to about the 6th century, with the exception of the Hanc Igitur, which is even later. Nevertheless, it is one grand and overruling idea which has determined the whole train of thought we find here. It is that of fellowship or communion with all Christians in God. As Christ now makes ready to mount the cross, the priest states the full purpose of the sacrifice, which is offered for the salvation of the church militant on earth and to the glory of the church triumphant in heaven. He now calls forth and ranges around about the altar the whole company of the baptized Christians, their leaders and ex exemplars at their head. He calls forth all who have suffered and strove here below and to, to lengthen the blessed shadow which the cross casts over the sins of the world. And he calls as well on those who are now sharers in the glory which, of which we look. In the first place stands the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Consoler of Man. As a matter of fact, the whole Christian community the word familia is actually used, is conceived as being now assembled here where the sacrificial prayer is making its present reality the re rapidly approaching moment when, by transubstantiation, the whole substance of the offering will become the whole substance of the body and blood of Christ our Lord. Nevertheless, what we have in the liturgical formularies is no merely textual reproduction of the evangelical account. Something has been added in the course of the centuries. Such are certain adjectives as those which describe the hands of our Lord as sanctas ac venerabiles, holy and venerable, or the word inspired by Psalm 22, verse 5, by which the chalice is called preclarum, or glorious. None of these additions is of much importance, since the medieval period we find in the midst of the consecratory formula for the wine the words mysterium fidei, the mystery of faith. Their meaning is here that here shines forth the essence of Christian faith, for now and truly, really substantially, such as the Tridentine terminology, the bread and wine are become the body and blood of Jesus Christ. It is because of the greatness of this mystery that it has been surrounded by solemnity. Especially has this been so since the 12th century, when heresy cast doubt upon the real presence. The thrice rung bell, the clouds of incense, the lighting of a, of a third candle, all are tributes to the Holy Presence. Particularly does the elevation affirm this presence in a magnificent gesture which at once raises to heaven and shows the whole congregation the bread which has become the body of Christ. Before bowing down in profound adoration, the devout soul looking up in fullness of faith and hope at the little host which veils the greatest of all mysteries. 
the elevation of the blood. It's not enough to adore God made man who is now present in the host. Nor are we to be satisfied by an entire acceptance of the mystery of transubstantiation. What must be done is to turn in full realization toward the action which is now being wrought upon the altar. This is a purely sacrificial act, and it must generally be admitted that the wine evokes in a more striking manner than does the bread the force of the sacrificial act of recalling the blood so freely shed on Calvary's hill by the victor victim. At this point, we are become witnesses of Christ's act of immolation. We are, as a matter of fact, more intimately united to it than mere witnesses, for it is we ourselves who offer to the Father this Lamb, who now mystically sacrifices himself. We are partakers, sharers, participants in his act. This puts us in touch with what has been, from time out of memory, recognized as being the core and the center of the oldest religious tradition. It is by the shedding of blood and reparation that man has ever appeased supernatural power. In the days of old Israel, every fault of whatsoever kind, be it one attached immoral or even merely ceremonial defilement, had to be blotted out in blood. Sine sanguine, non fit remissio. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. Yet it is evident that the mere sacrificial act of itself, unqualified by purpose, by participation, is of itself unavailing. Is not this cup we bless, says St. Paul, a participation in Christ's blood? The words themselves by which the wine is consecrated are much more explicit than the words of the consecration of the bread, and they have the effect of indicating more forcibly that we are here concerned with a means to attach of attachment between God and man with a new covenant. Here again, we confront the mysterium fidei, the mystery of faith. And it is by sharing in the victim's offering that man can find pardon for his sins. Just as he did with the host, the priest lifts the chalice and places it and shows it to the people. After he has blessed it, it is a tribute to the presence of the blood of Christ. At this time, we should join to the life which has been offered sacrificially on Calvary, our own life, by uniting in full oblation, for our own life is without meaning unless it is given to its giver. <laughs>